this is your uh, film reviewer and uh, I have ordered from Amazon no I ordered from uh, classicfilmflix.com a class a classic film that I got got interested and I'm gonna open up and we're gonna talk about it Here it is. Here it is. It's the um, it's the all six Dodo and Ames film. The complete, the complete Hal Rose Streamline Collection, Tracy and Sawyer's military comedies. And uh, take the wrappers off because it kind of over overshines it a bit. Okay. Okay. And I should take some of the shine off. Um, the reason why I got interested in this is mainly because it's one of the movies that uh, that um, appealed to me. Um, uh, they basically were under an hour, and uh, one of the things that appealed to me was their first and only one that was in color, in the old cine color process. Here comes trouble. And this is what interested me. I heard it was fixed, but I thought it was sold alone. And I found out that Classic Fix sold it with six other black and white featurettes that Joe Sawyer and and uh, Tracy, uh, name is Tracy. Uh, I think it's Tracy Williams. Well, anyway. He saw him on shop around the corner and he was in the 1940 version and in the 52 remake serial Terry and the Pirates. He was Terry Lee. And uh, yeah, William Tracy. That was his name, William Tracy. And uh, my interest is is the is their, 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 the one they did in the late 40s in Cine Color. And they got an unquest they got a questionable one on YouTube, which is black and white colorized, because this is taken from the Cine color print. And it's called um, it's called um, excuse me. Here comes trouble. And it says which was remastered in color from 35mm print exclusively for this set. And uh, it reads, it reads, for the first time, for the first, let me get my other, it reads, it reads, for the first time, on DVD, all six Tracy and Sawyer streamliners produced by Hal Rose and his special collection. Uh, Joe Sawyer was a character actor. You probably remember him. that came from outer space and Taz's son of Cochise, if you've seen that in the 50s. And uh, he and Tracy did some shorts together. But what interested me was the Cine color. They're only one that was in Cine color. Turner Classic Movies been showing the same film. I didn't wear it was the same movie for black and white for years, but this is a restored version. It says, when you hear the word streamliner, you might picture those high-speed passenger trains from 1930s, 1950s for, pion for pioneer movie producer Hal Roach. However, streamliner had an entirely different meaning. The man whose film studio was known for lots of fun saw a changing landscape 
in the picture business in the late 30s and came up with the idea of producing features with shorter than run times to accommodate movie houses as well as uh, as well as out as uh, houses as well as um, as well houses as well as um, out an out production cost the concept would prove successful with 22 streamlines being produced by the studios between 41 and 48 Hal Roach the first streamline Hal Roach premiered the first streamline 41 tanks a million a military comedy they uh, they learned William Tracy and Joe Sawyer as catastrophic prone uh, prone dodging the popular duo the popular duo would star five more service romps for the ro for Roach Hey Food 42 About Face 42 Fall In 43 Yanks Away Yanks Ahoy 44 and the scene color produced Here Comes Trouble and that's what I'm interested in mainly and it says a special six foot six uh, collection film collection is a must have for any fan of Hal Roach with each with each film called from the original Hal Roach Studio Masters featuring players including James Gleason, Margaret Dumont, Noah Berry Jr., Douglas Foley, um, Elise Knox, Frank Phelan, Gene Porter, Marjorie Lord, Vita M. Borg, and Charles Lane, and Betty Compson, and Joan Woodbury. And we're going to open it up, and this is what it looks like. And it explains all the features here. And this is this is what it looks like. And as I said, it explains the name of each feature here. But my only interest mainly is um, uh, the scenic color feature because I've been wanting to see that for a long time. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the movie. That's the only movie I'm going to play. And I'm going to uh, make a review on it. These other ones I can do without. I, in fact, I don't even care to make a review on that. Just, just the one that was in scenic color because that's what interests me. So I will see this picture and I will discuss with it right afterwards. And uh, it's from Music Flicks. So I will well, how do you do again? This is your movie reviewer. And before I mention anything else, I want to say that this is strictly for 18 and up only. And if anybody under 18 wants to watch my video, they must uh, be accompanied by parent or guardian when watching it, but they are not allowed to make any YouTube comments. Only their guardian. Now, I finished looking at this movie, mainly the uh, There's Trouble 1947, that's it. And so I want to uh, make uh, an opinion. This is one of the three Cine Color films that Hal Roach Studios would uh, produce and distribute after the war. This was one of the uh, series that Hal Rose produced with Team William Tracy and Tom Sawyer during the war. And this one was made after the war and the first and the only one that was in color. In this feature, Williams um, is out of the army and uh, is engaged to his girlfriend, played by Beverly Lloyd. And her father is a newspaper publisher who's going after a burlesque house because it's a front for crooks. 
Fred Aldridge and Church Hamilton in The Mysterious Lead. Now the Crooks has a burlesque dancer played by Joan Wood Woodbury to help them to blackmail the new blackmail the newspaper publisher to stop them from shutting the burlesque theater down. One of the uh, police reporters quit, played by Anthony Ward. Parnell is mad about his daughter being engaged to William because he's not wealthy. His daughter has pressured Parnell to give William a better job than he had before the war at the newspaper publishing company. Emory decides to give the uh, police reporter job to William. As soon as William's goes to the court, he meets his old army buddy, uh, played by Joe Sawyer, who's now a policeman, that uh, people for committing victimless crimes, like a, a person who was uh, a man who was uh, caught fishing without a license, but it was legal, and um, a man kissing his wife. The judge, um, gets mad at him, gets mad at Sawyer, and drops all the charges. And then is fearful that um, Tracy's gonna put, report him, put him on the newspaper. Sawyer shows up at, his, at, at, at William's fiance's father's house to try to persuade him not to print those mishaps in the newspaper. Legendary uh, Hollywood star Betty Bronson shows up in this film as the publisher's wife. This was her last film, and her film she did in, second film she did in color. The first one was the 1929 onward show and normally she was blonde, but in this case she's, she, she changed her hair color to auburn. When the phone in the house rings and somebody's blackmailing uh, Parnell, that's when Joe decides to stay in the house and to prevent the, uh, the blackmailers from coming in. It turns out to be Parnell coming into the house, being mis being misled as being the uh, as being the blackmailer, and he ends up firing Williams because of this. Williams' fiance tries to persuade him to talk to her father in getting his job back the next day. The burlesque queen. Uh, shows up at the publisher's house, the publisher's uh, business, and expresses to him that she switched sides, that she's willing to give the black book with a list of crooks, plus a diary of her and him gotten together in Atlantic City at a convention for $10,000. Arnell agrees with Joan, but Joan tells him it has to look like an accident. He has to go up and hit her before he can give her the money in the black book or else the crooks will find out and murder her. Arnell sends Williams to do the job. As soon as uh, Williams uh, shows up at her dressing room, the crook knocks on the door and she hides him quickly. And because the crook found out that she turned against them, and the, the mysterious crook murders her while he's hiding. The movie suggests that he call the police. Now, in this series, it's usually uh, William Tracy expresses, is portrayed, his character is portrayed as being the most intelligent while Joe Sawyer takes action before he thinks. Character actor who's noted to always playing a policeman, Thomas E. Head, who was in Mystery of the Wax Museum in, uh, and uh, Broadway, uh, shows up in this film as a police hero. The clown, played by Eddie Bartell, 
who had hay fever in which Williams gives him his medicine, the crook comes into his dressing room and, and knocks him down and ties him up and pretends to be that clown. William discovers that the clown wasn't the clown that he helped, but actually the crook who has the book but with tricks, he manages to get it. And before you know it, the police are chasing the crooks and the crooks are chasing uh, Williams to get the book and they're playing it like football, throwing the book to make sure the crooks don't get it, the black book. And they go on the burlesque stage and, th and an audience thinks that uh, it's, it's, it, it, it's part of the play and all that. And finally, finally, they, they finally, they, uh, uh, they finally, they gang up on the, the original clown and they jump on him and they stop him and they all move away and there's a clown laying down and all of a sudden they pull off the mask and it turned out to be the attorney general played by Paul Stanton. And uh, Williams was underneath me. As I stated, Turner Classic Movies has been showing this black and white print. And I want to thank that Cine Flicks for restoring it, showing the way it was meant to be seen. So, if you like my review, please comment, subscribe, hit the notification button, express a viewpoint if you want to. Bye.